So this is an OWASP project showcase about the threat model cookbook project. It's Jonathan Marcel. This is AppSec California 2020. So why have a threat model? It is to systematically structure security and systems, you know. Uh, it offers a view to perform design review on. That's great. It highlights improvements or requirements. It also organizes and enumerates possible attacks, right? OK, wait. This is supposed to be like a lightning talk, like a, like a flash talk, right? And so I just want to do like a small flashback before. So, woo, 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 woo. so two years ago, I was on this stage actually talking about that thing. Uh, I have like a talk that is called, uh, I think uh, it's called Threat Modeling, uh, maybe Threat Modeling Toolkit. And I did that talk like countless time. And actually since I did a lot of workshop as well. So going all around, mostly in the US and also Canada doing some workshops. Uh, it was great and I actually learned a lot from it because I met a lot of people, like over 200 people. And uh, everybody had diverse backgrounds and point of views. Uh, I, and I actually created threat models with them. So what I did is I actually collected some of it and I rebooted an OWASP project that was already existing, but was left over and not active that was called Threat Model Cookbook. And I was like, oh, I'm just going to take that and be like, we will create and also publish threat model examples. And it's either code, graphical, or maybe textual representation. So it's all on GitHub. It's an official OWASP, let's say, project. And what we will do in this talk is that we'll just go directly into the content. And I'm going to show you what we've done in those workshops and what is actually available right now on the project. So one of the type of diagrams that we have is the flow diagram. So this one is really there to draw the system to analyze, right? Another diagram that we have is the attack tree. And this one is to organize the possible attacks. The first showcase that I have is, uh, by the way, we all made up like it's made up that systems, they don't exist for real. So Suckify is a solution to buy use suck. I'm sorry, but it's not a thing for real. We made it in Montreal. And the example that I have for this one is really interesting because it's literally like hand drawn on a sheet of paper. And you can see clearly that it is a simple system. It interacts with Instagram if you look at the top. Uh, it has a web API, a mobile app, and you see some other components, right? Let me zoom in a bit so that you can just take a look. So again, easy. This one is monochrome. There's no color. It was literally just on a sheet like that. I was actually doing the whiteboard exercise at the same time with the room. So what you can see on this is that there's some notes all around. Those are the security controls that you might want to upgrade in the system that you just model. Like right now, we see that we have HTTP. Uh, and the solution is just to put HTTPS. Again, this is a dumb example, right? But this happens really often in the real world as well, that you're like, oh, there's just a small detail that we want this upgrade. And this is a great way just to take note and also to tell people and remember them, hey, look at the diagram. You remember that thing? This thing needs to be HTTPS. Another thing that we can do with it is that we can guide actually pen testing. So let's say if you have a few pen testers, you throw them normally at one thing, but then they don't know much about the system. And I don't know, like you don't have time to brief them or even them to meet the development teams or anything like that. So what they will do is that they can just take the model that you just created and then you just point them an arrow and they have a lot of context. Like they know what are the other systems that are around and everything. So another thing is that you can have some questions because it's literally this was made, let's say, meeting and then there's a thing that we weren't clear about is it json x what is this thing are we sure about the other protocols that goes with it so you can just use so uh and speaking of notes if there's details that are important for security you can just have them on the model as well so in this case it's like oh there's a name the address and the credit card number are in this database and so again this is really simple. This is really useful, though. It's not doing much about the security itself. It's just giving a view of the systems to work on. 
But that's a great view that you can go forward with the security things you need to do on. So we also did an attack tree. Uh, because I'm really quite limited on time, I'm not going to go into the details. But this one has a goal of basically in order to stalk some people. So if you want to stalk people on Instagram that post picture of their silks, you can. And then here's the ways on how to do it. So it's like a brainstorm of what we did. Of like We had like a panel in front of the room during the workshop. And a few people were like, here's the ideas that I have. And then we just organized them into an attack tree. So the attack tree is great for that. So another workshop that we did was the renting car startup. Uh, this one was made in San Francisco. So it's a connected AI, AR car renting system slash startup. As you can see, it comes from San Francisco because of the buzzwords. Um, so the flow diagram, this one looks a bit better because it's not hand drawn. if I zoom in a bit. Uh, on this one, you will see that it's the same type of components that you've seen being on drawn, but this one clearly indicates that, okay, we have two mobile apps. And so it gives you like, like an understanding of the big picture. And really, when I was doing those slides, I wasn't remembering the stuff we did in that workshop. That was more than six months ago. But as soon as I took the diagram, my mind was like reconnecting the dots and I was like, Oh, now I remember. So it's a great way as well to remember because often you will work on projects over time. You know, you're doing security over time on a project and you don't really remember uh, even the big pictures. Like you just need a cue and this is a great cue. And other thing that is really telling about the diagram, if you go down south on it, is that there's a lot of APIs. So apparently that company loves APIs and there's a variety of it. And so that gives you like the big picture of what is going on. Uh, the reason it's so well drawn and well aligned is that we actually use PyTM, that is uh, like a tool in order to generate some threat models and it also generate the graphs ready for us. So all that you, we did in order to do that is that we created that code and then we generated the graph. So of course, during the exercise, it was a whiteboard one, but as we were doing it, there are some people that were coding in Python just to have it updated, and that's why we have an output as good as that. We also did the same with uh, Attack Tree. Uh, I won't go into the details because we went in great details with them. Uh, and the Attack Tree was also made by a tool that is called Plant UML. In the projects, the way that I align the files and everything, is that uh, you will browse the project and you will see all the name of the examples that I just shown you and with like uh, a file extension that goes at the end. So if it's in Python, it means it's PyTM. If it's uh, like there's visual files, there's the plant UML that I just told you about the attack tree. There's even JPEGs for like the pictures or the scan of the undrawn stuff that we have. So Jet Scout was, uh, this one was made in Austin. It's a smart scooter that accepts voice commands. Uh, and this one, I just want to make it as an example on how diverse and different you have uh, the graph when you ask a full room. Because this one had a full class and almost everybody in the class was I'm drawing it. And it turns out that the diagrams, they all look more so the same because they are the same system. They were following what we were seeing up front. Uh, they were following what I was drawing. And my own drawing, by the way, is way worse than theirs. <laughs> uh, but they were following it. But then it's the way they decide to align it. Uh, I saw a few people that did like a first version draft, and then they read it a better version. And so you have like, a really good view on how it can look on paper. So in the projects, we also have other types of threat models, but I didn't expand a lot. Like I said, there's a bit of the PyTM that I have in it. There's Irius Risk that was already there before. It's like a system in order to create threat models. So then you just have, there's only one example, but it's pretty complete. And you will see that it's way more than just some graphs like the ones that I did. Uh, the template are there because I think that's a reality that we have right now that most of the time when we do threat modeling, we are having templates, but there's not many examples online of that. So we're trying to start slowly. Uh, 
The main point that I want to expand on is actually PyTM because I think it's an awesome tool and right now I'm just using it uh, in order to graph, but it can do so much more. This relies a bit on Isar that is in the room right now. Uh, and we might expand on this because uh, in the in the PyTM repo is the source code about the tool, but me, I actually kind of want to host examples and stuff. So I'm kind of doing his marketing right now. I don't know why. Oh, by the way, don't believe uh, any codes that is out of context from Slack like that. It's no good. So this is the example for the template. So really simple. Data flow diagrams goes there. At least you run three points and asset. Really simple. We're not saying that the stuff that we put in the project is great. We're not saying that you should use that tool, you should use that methodology. We're not saying we're using it right. And we're also not saying that the system we model are perfect because of course they are not, because if they were to be, there's no point on basically modeling it in order to search for attacks on it and stuff. So, but it, it's there for you to be curious, I think, because you can learn by example on how to create threat models. Uh, Instead of trying to read, I don't know, like you can read a few books on the topics and then there's some examples uh, that, that are, most of them are huge. In the case of the project, I think we have a lot of small examples that you can just check and there's a variety of them. And so it gives you like a lot of choices that you can just go on and read and be like, okay, now I understand where this is going. So you can literally use it in order to create your own. You just basically recopy the same thing you're seeing as an example in your own project and it will just work. You can also contribute if you want. Uh, what we need is that we need to create different version of existing models. So right now, everything that I uploaded, we invented new systems that maybe that if you want to jump in and just contribute and add another view, use another tool, you can. You just create a pull request and it goes in the same folders and it's awesome. You can also build your own system examples uh, normally, the main problem we have like that is that in the industry right now, we don't share those things, right? Because you don't want to expose your systems to everybody on the internet to know where the flaws are. Or if you're just not doing it, that's fine. But like, uh, normally, we like to have examples that are not real, made up stuff that, 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 that will closely resemble what is existing because people are people. But the goal is really to have a variety of methodologies and systems as well. And so if you want to contribute on anything, that could be great. So I like doing questions a lot because I like to interact with the audience. And so uh, that was the main of the content. Uh, I would, because we're short on time, I have like around maybe 10 minutes for questions. So if we can focus more about the projects, and then if we have some time after, we'll do about threat modeling, but you can reach me after for that. Yes. Thank you. Uh, my name is Trupti, and um, I have done tons and tons of threat modeling for monolith applications or you know, typical complex enterprise level web application. But currently I'm living and breathing in the world of microservices where we are kind of shifting from agile more to fast feature driven SDLC. So what is your take on doing threat modeling for features? Like you don't get the complete view. It's so complex. So how you, <laughs> you don't you. get, yeah. Okay. And so really the question is about, I have too many things. What do I do? Uh, it's too big. Like this one is quite big. It's not the biggest that I've seen. Uh, the way it is in the project is that because we had a limited time to create the system, I was scooping the people, mm -hmm. but I was telling them the trick of, okay, if you're doing too much and there's too many, it's because your scope is too big. Mm -hmm. So there's no projects that should live on earth that is ungraspable by all the smart minds there is. It's not a thing. They should just divide the projects. Mm -hmm. And so if they don't do that, that's their problem. On your end, you should divide those diagrams. And so maybe I have too much API on this one. And so maybe I can just be like, okay, I'm just gonna create like one abstraction of the API and then do another threat model just for APIs. So it's up to you all to decouple the stuff. What if there is no documentation and they don't wanna do it? <laughs> then I'm not going to say it because I'm on stage with it mm, to be you. Uh, like, 
There's no documentation. What you can do is that, OK, when we were doing the workshop, do you think we had documentation and we still created that, right? We just made it up. So you just gather people in a room, you sit them for four hours, and you make them bleed their knowledge. And that's four it. Four hours? Did what? you say four hours? Yeah, well, in this case, yeah. yeah. Uh, OK, if you want to know, depending on the scope of what you have, normally one hour, one hour and a half, it's OK if they know about the system. But if the thing is a mess, like you're saying, you might need more than one hour and a half. You might need two, you might need three, you might need four. You might need to redo another meeting after just to revise and stuff. And so, But that's a great question. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I do have a question. I know, um, what would you recommend for doing threat mod modeling for air gap systems? Because you know, we're talking about more insider threat. Supposedly, it's air gap, right? So, any recommendation? Okay, so this one, I think I could stir you uh, with uh, the attack trees uh, because it seems that you want to know about what is possible to be done uh, around those type of systems more than graphing what they are, right? So that's the difference between the two. And right now in the project, uh, you can find uh, actually quite a few examples because I also did other presentations in the past, like the one I did here, and all like uh, the code that I wrote in Plant UML and all the attack trees are there, so it could give you an example on how you do it. But basically, you go with the goals and then you break down the attacks, and this really could help you in order to wrap your mind around. Then again, this project might also help you to give you idea because we put kind of real-ish stuff in it. Because normally when I show that to people, I am just telling them, okay, uh, here's an, an attack tree, it's a tree, go for it, right? And the missing thing that we had in the past was that there's no real content, right? But if you go in the project right now and you open a few attack trees, you will see that you will have examples on how maybe think, like how the other people might think about uh, uh, how to break down a web API or a thing like that. So in your particular case right now, I don't think we have like an example of the sort, but if you want to start one, and then having some other people contribute and build it ready together, that'd be great. We're a lot looking for that online. I might be doing it for um, like a new uh, AI machine learning thing on threat modeling that I might do this year. So I might add those type of stuff but really, for that, you need to gather domain experts and everything. But if people want to contribute in knowledge and then it's, it's in the repo, that'd be great because instead of just showing the people, um, like, this is how you do an attack tree, you will give them the content as well. You have give them ideas about the security bits of what you're trying to do. Okay, we, question? we have time for one more question. So nobody. So you can reach me uh, after for sure for more in detail questions. Uh, I would like to thank all the workshop participants that I use the content that we created together. So OAS BRL chapter NorthSec 2019, LASCOM 2019, and OAS Santa Barbara. Uh, also Twitch security for permitting me to be here. Uh, I have some swag, uh, a bunch of pens and the stickers in the front if you want it all. It, it, like, it's all Twitch brand, and all I need to say for that is that we are hiring right now, and security jobs are open. So, and big thanks to you to be in this room. This link has everything, including all the links to the code, the link into the project, the link into my older, uh, older presentation that I did at AppSec Kelly, so via all the stuff, and this is how to reach me directly on Twitter or by email. So again, big thanks for coming, and have a great day.